Code Emotion. So thanks for inviting me to come here. Um, I'm very happy to present Calabash, which is a new framework that we have developed uh, for automated functional testing of uh, mobile apps. And uh, if you've never heard about Calabash before, I'm not surprised because it's only two weeks old. We released it two weeks ago. Uh, but we have been using this tool uh, internally at the company where I'm working, which is called Pinnacle, uh, to test our clients' mobile apps automatically. And now we are releasing it for open source, and it's free to use, and uh, you can check it out afterwards. Okay, so uh, just a second about me. Uh, I have a background in theoretical computer science uh, in 2006, uh, but after I did that, I decided I wanted to do something that affects the real world more because the theory stuff, it was uh, not, nobody was reading. So I joined a Danish company called Trifork, which is a software development company, uh, and I've been there, working there for about six years, mostly on Java enterprise systems, uh, web systems, JavaScript. Uh, but for the last two years, I've been working on the iOS platform, developing apps for some of the larger Danish banks, doing their uh, home banking system for the mobile iPhone and iPad. Um, and the most the recent thing is that I've joined this company, which is called Less Painful, and we do automated functional testing. I'll tell you more about this today. Yeah, I must say, I, do you know the closure programming language? Have you heard of it? It's fantastic. I love it. You should check it out very much. I just want to say I love Richie. All right. So, agenda for today, I'm going to tell you what I mean by automated functional testing. Uh, and we're going to make a list of things I would like to have from a tool that does automated functional testing. And maybe you don't agree with my list, but uh, maybe you do, and you can add some your own points, and you can remove some of mine. But it's nice to have a reference, a common reference. Okay. So I'll introduce Calabash, of course. And I'm only going to focus on iOS, because this is where my expertise is. But most of the things I say also apply to Android development. Not yet for Windows uh, Phone but uh, maybe sometime in the future. Right, and I'll give you a live demo of what Calabash does. <laughs> and also uh, the company that's paying for what our service is. All right, so what do I mean by functional testing? Uh, functional acceptance testing for this talk is the same thing. So as opposed to unit testing, when you're doing functional testing, you want to test your entire app. You don't want to isolate a class or a component and test that. You want to test the real thing that you're going to put in production. Okay? So often when you do this, if you're working with a company, you have some use cases. They're written in natural language. Uh, it could be English, it could be Italian. Uh, and it's usually written in the language of the domain. So if I'm working in a bank, it's going to use the concepts of the bank, like accounts or bonds and stocks. Okay? So we do, when you do functional testing, you have a use case which says, if I do this, 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 then this should happen. Right? Um, another thing that's different from a unit test is that the visual appearance of the actual application matters a lot. Uh, I may have a brand that I want to be presented in a specific way. No problem, I'll just uh, wait a second. You can get half the talk on video. <laughs> yeah, right, I can talk to you afterwards. All right, so I'm saying for unit test, the UI, the graphical user interface, doesn't matter. For uh, functional testing, it matters a lot particular for iOS and Android apps. Also, I want to test in an environment that is as realistic as possible, okay? Because it's the final thing I do just before I put my app into the App Store and put it in production. I want to make sure it works. So I want to test on devices, and not simulators, and so on. So this is what I mean by functional testing. So for mobile apps in particular, there are some problems because we're getting more and more devices. We get uh, over 100 Android different devices with different operating systems running different languages with different screens. And even on iOS, we have the iPad, the iPod Touch, various versions of the iPhone running various versions of the iOS operating systems. And those can be different. And we need to test, in principle, we need to test on everything to make sure that the quality is high. Okay, so in my experience, doing this with customers, this is a very manual process, so it's people sitting with their phones, do it on one phone, do it on the next phone, on the next phone, and so on. It takes a lot of time and it's very boring. And if you do short cycles, short release cycles, so say every two weeks you release a new version for testing, they have to repeat the same thing over and over again. So it's very expensive. 
So I think that the, there is value in trying to automate this as much as possible. So that's the, the purpose of this talk. So maybe we should look at some problems with trying to automate this and also uh, some requirements that I would like for a tool for automating this, okay? So functional tests are based on use cases, but tests that run on a computer system are usually written in a programming language. So I want the gap between the test, the use case, and the, the test to be as small as possible because then I can be sure that the test is actually testing what the use case is saying. And this leads into the, the domain of domain-specific languages. Of course, writing tests take time, and it takes uh, time to maintain the test. So I want this to be as efficient as possible to do. Okay. Also, I want to be able to express, when I write a test for a mobile app, I want to be able to express um, all the things that the user can do to the phone, like touching and swiping, uh, panning, all these different things. Okay. I want it to be expressive. Also, I want my test to be fairly high level because I don't want a test which is saying everything is okay and then I move a button one pixel to the right and then the test is saying no, nothing's working. Okay, so it should be fairly high level and robust uh, to minor changes in the UI because otherwise I'm going to spend too much time maintaining the test. And I want to be able to test on real devices because of this uh, desire for realism. How, how many are doing continuous integration in this room? Oh, cool. Very cool. That's the best uh, show of hands I've ever seen in a, a mobile conference. So, cool. And I want my tool to support this. We have sound now. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Cucumber. How many know Cucumber? A few? Okay, good. And Calabash, because Calabash is based on Cucumber. But Cucumber is very simple, so we can explain it very briefly. So Cucumber gives you a framework for writing specifications of what an application should do. Okay, so you can write down in the language, you can write down what the app should do. But at the same time, the thing you write down can be executed as a test. Okay, so it's a use case and a test at the same time, which is very, very cool. Uh, and the way you write these specifications, it's not in a programming language. It's in a, a, a language which is like natural text. It can be written in uh, your own language, it can be written in English, and it can be written using the concepts from your domain. So it's almost like an executable executable use case. And this is actually a very t a popular tool in the web testing area. Uh, and some of our clients are using Cucumber to test their web applications and we want to leverage that when uh, testing mobile applications as well. Okay, so what does a Cucumber test look like? So here is an example of a, a feature. So a feature in Cucumber is a file, a text file, where you write down the feature. And it's more or less the same as a feature in your application. So here we have an example. So the feature has a description, which is just some text uh, describing what is this feature about. So it's, as an administrator, I want to be able to add and remove users so I can control access to the application. Okay, it's just an example of this. Okay, so this is a description. A feature consists of a number of scenarios. Okay, and the, each scenario corresponds to use case. So it could be everything's going okay, or it could be when I do all this, then I should see this error message. So let's look at this one scenario. It's called add test user. So it consists of a number of steps. Actually, I have some animation for this. Let's use it. Wow. I know keynotes. There we go. Okay. So this is the first step. It just says when I touch the add user button. Okay. Next step. Next step is, and I fill in the text fields. Uh, the field last name should be nor, and the field username should be nor with a, a, cap, a small k. So that's another step. And then I touch save. And then the last one is a, is a different kind of step. So the first one say, when I do this, when I do this, when I do this. Then the last thing says, this should happen. Okay? I should see a table containing nor. So that's the usual form of these uh, cucumber tests. Now, the, the, the cool thing about this is that everybody can read this. You can sit down with your uh, business people and read this. Maybe they can even write it. But at the same time, it's also an executable specification. It's actually a test I can run. So how does it work? It sounds uh, magic, but it's not magic at all. It's very, very simple. So what you do is you have to define for each step a block of code that's going to run when Cucumber runs that step. And, it's, and the way you do this, that you write these step definitions in a normal programming language. For Cucumber, it's Ruby, uh, but there are also some projects starting to move this to the JVM platform, so you can use Java. 
You can use uh, close your Scala, whatever you want. All right, so let's take an example here. So the feature, uh, add test user, then there's a step called when I touch the add user button. When Cucumber comes to here, it is going to look through all the step definitions, which look like this. Okay, so a step definition is just a regular expression here. And if the text matches the regular expression, then this block of code, this is actually Ruby code, this do, blah, 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 and that's a block of actual executable Ruby code. That's going to be run. So the way Cucumber works is really, really simple. It just takes each step, finds the associated block of code, executes it, next step, and so on. Now, in here, we have a special API you can use, written in Ruby, uh, for doing stuff to a mobile application. Like, I want to touch the button that has the text add user. Okay, so you can write this in code here. So that's how Calabash works. All right, so a bit more about Calabash. So the idea with Calabash is that it's one interface, which is Cucumber, to writing tests for both Android and iOS. Okay, and what steps, what steps can you write? Well, either you can use the predefined steps that we come with. It's like touch this button or a swipe or there should be this text on the screen. Okay, but if that's not good enough, you can write your own steps. Right? And you, and you do use Ruby to do this. And you can reuse the same test for both Android and iOS. You can run your test on either physical, I mean, actual uh, iPhone or Android devices, or you can run in the simulators that you know from your development. A new thing is that we support hybrid web apps, uh, sorry, hybrid apps, that, so that are native apps that have web components inside them, which is quite unique. And of course, this is uh, free and open source, but the way the, uh, the business model for the company works is that you can use this for free, but if you want some add-ons, you can use our service, and I'll explain what the service is. Um, actually, I'll explain now. So one part of the service is that you can run your tests on devices that are running in our, uh, in our cloud, so we have machines with actual phones hooked up into them, and you can submit your app and your tests, and they will run on our phones. We also uh, write, we can write the test if you want that, uh, and we can help setting up continuous integration, but you don't need this already because you have it. All right, so very briefly about the architecture for iOS. I'm just taking time here. It's okay. Um, so you have a number of features written in Cucumber. I can take questions afterwards. Okay. So those features are going to be executed by this Cucumber tool. And maybe you have defined your own steps, and you do this using the Ruby API. OK, so that's your test side. Over here, you have your app, your iOS app here. And to use Calabash, you have to link your app with a spe special library that we provide. OK, and this doesn't change how your app works. All it does is that it embeds an HTTP server inside your app that these tests can talk to. So the test over here can say, please touch this button. And this library here will perform the touch event on your app. So that's how it works. And that's all it does. It doesn't change how the app works in any way. OK, so when you run all this, uh, in the end, you get a test report which shows which tests are OK, which test fails, and why it failed. So that's very briefly the architecture of iOS. It's slightly different on Android, but it's the same basic idea. So what's the uh, less painful service? And the idea is uh, to execute these tests on a lot of phones at the same time. So as I said, we have these machines with uh, some 50 phones uh, connected to them. And you can send your test and then run them at the same time on all these different phones to make sure they work on various models. And it's very important to us that these phones be not jailbroken. So it's real phones, like you go out and buy it in the shop, you stick it in the, in the cloud. Um, and one thing you get is that you get visual test reports, and I'll give you an example of this, where you can actually see your app uh, graphically on different models. Because this, for instance, on Android, it could be various uh, screen problems that are very nice to see lined out. I'll show you an example. And we support different operating systems uh, and also different languages. If you need to support, say, both Italian and English, you can set the device to run in different languages before the test execute. Right. So I said that uh, we want to be authentic. And this means that everything is for real, even rotation on devices. And I have a very small video showing it. It's very cool. This is a prototype, I should say, of the setup. So these are actual phones <laughs> hooked up on a wall. It's a bit more organized now. Uh, but this was to show that you can actually do this. That's nice. OK, so that's what's happened. Could you, could you go one slide back, please? That we need to 
Ah, you like the video, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a cool video. We'll put it on YouTube, I think. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I can see it many times. <laughs> There's actually sound, but it doesn't seem to work. All right, so that's just an example. Now it's a bit more neat, you know, it's a bit more organized. Uh, my partner Jonas, he found out that you can put CDs, and you can put the phones on that, and that works very well to take them off. And I don't know, I just write the code. Okay, some more things about Calabash iOS. So it's actually quite simple to get started. Uh, if, you're, if you have a Mac and you're already developing an iPhone app, uh, you have to run a few commands, and then you're ready to run your test. I'll show this in a minute. Uh, we have a, a, a query language for finding stuff because when you're doing a, an app test, you need to find different components in the UI. So we have a small query language for finding, uh, say, buttons and uh, table cells and different components. Um, it's based on something called UI spec, but we've changed it a bit and it's a new implementation. Then this is the most uh, interesting part to me, is that we have quite advanced support for uh, synthesizing touch events. So it can even be multi-touch and uh, sequences of touch events, like five fingers rotating on an iPad or something. We can do this inside the test. And you can even uh, define your own uh, touch sequences that you can play back in a test. That's very nice. And you have the full power of Ruby available in your tests, so you can do whatever you want. And also the development experience is uh, quite nice. It's interactive. You can sort of explore your application, uh, find out how you're going to write your test, and then put it in a file and persist it. I'll also show this, uh, this experience here. Uh, okay, so what's the query language look like? So to find stuff in the UI, you can write things like this. Uh, find me the label which has text hello. So it will search through the UI, find this particular label if it exists. Otherwise, it returns an empty result. Uh, or you can say label with the index two, so that's the third label. Uh, this construct marked, so I should say it uses accessibility on, uh, uh, on the iPhone here to find stuff. So you may, maybe you know the voiceover. It will actually talk to you. I don't know if you can hear. This is the accessibility feature. What, if you turn this on on the phone, it gives you a way of assigning a unique, you can call it an ID, to each component. And then you can find stuff using that ID. So it's a very nice way to, uh, to find a particular component just uh, using an ID. You can also find your own classes by writing this. Find view colon and then the name of whatever UI component you've developed. Uh, and you can, if you're an iOS developer, you know the NS predicate. You can find stuff using an NS predicate. Uh, and the news thing is that we support web views. So if you have a web view in a particular uh, uh, view in your app, and you want to find an HTML element inside, you can use a, a CSS query to do this, just like jQuery. Um, and then you can look, look at the text inside that. So that's very nice. Or you can use XPath if you want. Okay, let me try and demo how this actually works. Uh, I should probably not sit down because I have all these microphones. So here is um, this is a small app. How long time? Oh, that's okay. Okay, so it'll be a short demo. So this is a very, very simple app. It doesn't really do anything. It's just to illustrate how you can do testing with Calabash. So it just has, you know, a view, uh, some buttons and stuff. Uh, has a map. Uh, some cells, you can do stuff. And the final thing is a web view. Okay. So let's try and set up this. This is just a project. It could be your project. It's not prepared. Uh, let's try and set it up to run Calabash. So you go to a command line. Can you read this? The size okay? And when you, when you install it, you have to read the instruction how to install. Uh, it's uh, based on Ruby. Then you get a, a tool that's called Calabash iOS, and you can run setup. And I'll actually ask if I want to close Xcode because it's changing the project file. Ah, okay, so it's a problem with the network, but I've prepared, so I have, so it was going to download the framework, but now I have a network problem, so I can't do this. Uh, but you can run it again if you have downloaded it manually, uh, and we don't want to re-download. And now it changes my project file in Xcode uh, to make sure it's set up to run. 
So what I've got now is in the frameworks folder I have Calabash and also it needs uh, the CF network, the Apple framework CF network. Okay, and also I have a new scheme here which is called uh, symbol example dash cal. And if I run this, I get this version of the app which is, uh, has this uh, library linked in. So if I run the other scheme, I don't get the library. And the way you can see this is if you look at the console here, it will actually tell you that it started an HTTP server on a particular part. And now we can talk to it. Okay, so now we're actually set up. And now we can run a command which is called Calabash iOS gen, which will generate the default structure for tests so you can get started very easily. Oh, I, I did this previously. Let's just remove the old one, pretend that didn't happen. Like this, and it will generate if I say okay. Now it's made a folder which is called uh, features. That's the standard cucumber way of putting your test in a folder called features. And inside that we have uh, my first feature. And we can actually just try and run this. Actually, let's look what's inside first. It's like this. So, some description. I want to have a similar test. And all it does is that given the app is running, take a picture. So that's supported in, in Calabash. It's like taking a screenshot of the app right now. So let's try and run this test using this command here. So when I do this, it will actually start up the simulator. And, uh, okay, it was a very small test, so it stopped again. But you can see it generated a screenshot, uh, which is how my app looked in the first screen. Ten minutes, okay. Now, let's try and do something more interesting. So if we look here, this is an editor, just a text editor for the features. Here's my feature. Now let's, I want to touch uh, the, the second button in the tab bar. So I can actually just write this using some of the predefined steps that Calabash comes with. Um, let's just, then I touch the second button. All right, I can just do, then I touch second. That's the simplest way of doing it. Okay, let me just show you what's supposed to happen. If I start it manually, and I touch the second button here, then we go to the map. This is actually in the US because it's the simulator. All right. So let's try and run this new test. And this time, let's make sure we can see the simulator here. It will change, and it will take a screenshot. Uh, screenshot 9. OK, and you see you have the map here, which is quite nice. Now, so far, I've, not, I've just done stuff. I have not asserted that uh, something is supposed to happen. So uh, let's write this differently. You can write then, or when, or given, or and. It's the same thing. So, when I touch second, then I should see a map. So this is another predefined step that we've provided that you can just use without defining yourself. And take a picture. Let's just make sure we save this. Let's run the test. And it prints out. So as you can see here, when I run the test, it actually prints out what it does. Given it's running, when I touch second, then I should see a map. Now, if this was not, uh, if it didn't see a map, then this would be red and the test would fail. Uh, we can try this if you like. We can touch uh, third instead. And you can see what a failing test looks like. Now, it's waiting a bit of time to see if a map is going to appear, uh, but it didn't and the test fails. All right. Um, so that's using the predefined steps. Now, um, you can also write your own steps using Ruby code, using an API that we provide. So what you do is, in here, you make a new file. It's called my steps. It could be anything as long as it's .rb for Ruby. But you put it in step definitions. And then here you can write a new, your own step. Now suppose we want to, when I touch uh, second, then I should see a map, uh, uh, let's say, then I wait for a user location. Now this is actually not a step that I've defined. So if we run the test like this, what's going to happen? It'll start up. And it tells me, you have actually not defined this. Can you please do it? And then you can actually just paste this way 
uh, this uh, suggestion into your my steps here. And then you have to write something here. So what does it mean to wait for user location? And then we have an API you can use. You can write stuff like wait for. So this is actually documented what you can write here. Let's wait for at most five seconds until um, query uh, view, it's called MK user. I can't actually remember what, the, what this one is, so I have to look it up. So what I'm, I'm looking for is the uh, user location, the view that represents the user location. It's this one here. That's an actual iOS class view that I'm looking for. All right, so I wait for this to, to be empty. Okay, and it should not be empty. Okay, can you read this? So it says, wait for five, at most five seconds, until this query is not empty. Okay? Let's run it. Now, it actually waited until it saw the user location, and this test is okay. Now, five minutes. Yeah. I want to show you some of the more advanced stuff for doing uh, touch synthesis. Um, and also the interactive part of this. Because uh, it's a bit annoying every time you write this. If I write something wrong here, I have to start my app and do all the steps. And then only at the end I discover that I wrote something that wasn't correct. Ah, that's not very nice. So we have this interactive mode where you can actually manually start your app. Put it over here, and then you can do some some stuff. Go here, maybe go here, and then you can start like a shell, where you get an interactive uh, sort of command prompt, where you can ask different questions to the application and do stuff to it. So here now I can use the query language that I briefly mentioned before as to query a label. Are there any labels? And then you actually get a description of all the labels that are in the UI right now. Uh, of course, this, this is a, you call the description uh, selector on the iOS object, so it's not very readable. Um, but we can do, give me the text property of those labels, which is maybe a bit more interesting. So you can inspect into the views. All right. Now, one of my favorite features is that right now Calabash doesn't come with, uh, say, drag-drop support, which is what you need if you want to do this. Right, but it's no problem because you can define your own gestures that you can play back later. Okay, so I can do this, record, begin, and then I do something like here. All right, and I can do record end, and let's move down, and that will actually save a file to my file system that I can play back later. Okay, so I can play back, move down, and then I have to tell it uh, where am I going to to do this. Actually, let's just do query nil. Let's see if that works. And it'll just play back in the same location. OK, that was the wrong way of doing it, actually. Let's do query table view cell. OK. Now, what I want to do right now is I want to find this thing here. But I don't have an ID for it. So I have to write a very advanced query to find first this, let's say, this cell, this label and then move up and find the table cell, and then move down and find the actual moving component, which is actually quite advanced to do. So let's try this. So first I find the label, which has the text cell six. All right, let's try to see if that works. Okay, that's good. Now I can do parent table view cell. Okay, and that actually gives me moving up the parent table view cell, then I can move down again. Um, but actually, I don't know what's down, so let me just ask that question. So if I do child view, it will actually print all the views that are child views of that table view cell. And now we see the thing we're looking for, table view reorder control. So let's finish the, the query. So I don't want any view. I want the view which has the class this. Right, and that's the thing I want. Okay, let's save this. As Q, that's, that's the query. Okay, and now I want to play back my touch event on that particular object. Okay? Now, this is what I mean by an interactive experience when you're developing. You can sort of explore your application. 
All right, let's play back move down. And you do query, uh, and I call this Q. And let's see, and it actually moves the table till down. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. And actually, um, we can do something also very cool. Move down, start. Um, now I'm going to start at this one here. I don't know that start. Is it okay? I take two more minutes. I just want to show one more thing. I guess it's okay. Let's say Q. There. Q is, uh, let's use table, I don't know, four, cell four. And let's R is, R is number, uh, let's take number eight. Then I can do interpolate, move down, start at Q. Uh, I think I have to write it like this. And at R. I haven't actually tested this before, so it'll be interesting to see what happens now. Now, did you see what happened? It didn't move two, it moved from the, the start to the end instead. So that's very, very uh, nice to do a uh, drag drop to, between arbitrary elements. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, I can show you also web view, but I think my time is running up. So if you're interested in seeing the web queries, you can come up afterwards and ask. Otherwise, let me just uh, show you the last slides. Um, I want to show you what our test reports look like at lispainful.com. So this is the commercial service. So when you run, this is a, a, an application we are testing for a client, which is a music streaming app. And this is actually taking screen dumps, running on an iPhone 4 with this iOS version and an iOS 5.0 version. Uh, and you see the test steps here and the screenshots running down. So it's actually quite nice on iOS. Uh, and we have the same application running on Android. You see the different screen sizes here. But just to scare you, I want to show you an example of what happens if you don't test enough on Android. This is an actual app that's in production in Denmark, one, a big uh, real estate uh, company. And first of all, they didn't know that this particular model is always starting like this. So it doesn't look very well. This is OK. But then you have stuff like this. On this particular Android version, the graphic is, is all screwed up. And if you don't have this phone, it's, it's just hard to know, right? And you have more like this, you have a, a shaded version here. And this variant coming here again. So this is not very nice for this particular company. And this is the part of the service that we provide that you can try out. And you can actually try it out for free for 14 days if you want. You can ask me about it afterwards. Just, I have to finish now. He has some other options you can look at if you're looking at testing. Uh, but I, I, I frankly think that our, our technology is the best right now. And these are the links. So, questions? Yeah? What about JVM or one of the applications of yeah. Are you developing already for that? There are, uh... So, we are basing ourselves on Cucumber. And right now, Cucumber is based on Ruby. But there is a project, a new project, which is called Cucumber JVM which lets you write your test in any JVM language. Okay, and once that is ready, we can just use it. So you can write your test in, in Java or Scala or Clojure or whatever. So it's, it's very short and we can do it. Yeah, yeah. Is there any mechanism in place to test the HTML5 application? Uh, that? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, we have not tried it yet. I mean, no, 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 uh, not, not actually, I mean, not, own, not pure HTML5. It has to be a native app which embeds a web view, so stuff like PhoneGap and this. We don't yet have any support for doing pure HTML testing. Does that mean if you think it can be added? Yeah, if, if enough clients are interested in this, maybe we can look at it. But right now, we're focused on, on native and hybrid apps. Because there are things like Selenium you can use to uh, automate web already. Yeah. So it's not in our space in some sense. Yeah, But it's, it's very important. The point about the Selenium is you still have to inject the native somewhere. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, uh, not, uh, yeah. Exactly, which is not very good, yeah. So it may be a place that, um, but we have to figure out some way to do it without doing, having this problem. 
Yeah. What about Android support? The same about tablets? Yes. Yeah, Android. we. We don't have, we have not bought any tablets yet. We've actually bought iPads and we're putting them on, but we're going to support tablets just no, as. No, Android, not tablets. Android. Oh no, this, this runs on Android. Ah, so it's the same support level than iOS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, there are some differences in, uh, in like the APIs that you use for your tests, but you can use Cucumber to run the same test on Android and iOS if you write your custom steps in the right way. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry? Yeah, we're, we have a client that's running a phone gap app right now and it's working out okay so far. But uh, I'm going to target phone gap very much. So I'm looking at this, I mean, right now. Code emotion.